Fan Fan, please welcome Abby McEnany and Julia Sweeney to the show. <laughs> I mean, this is fantastic. Julia, you've said that we were meant to be laughing at everyone around Pat, not Pat. Okay, help me understand it. Well, I mean, Christine Zander and I, who was the writer who wrote all the sketches on SNL with me, we did make a pact at the beginning that all the jokes would be about people being uncomfortable about Pat's androgyny, but that Pat wasn't uncomfortable about Pat's androgyny. So Pat was and, living uh, her best life, and the joke was on us. Well, yes. I mean, it's more complicated than <laughs> oh, that, gosh. but yes, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> but when you say Pat ruined your life, d explain that to me, that, that Pat... Oh. Right. Well, I have to say, like, Pat did not ruin my life, and Julia did not ruin no. my life, uh, right? Like, when Pat came out, I love Pat. Um, I think um, when I was coming out and, um, you know, I had dark hair and big glasses, I looked a lot like Pat. Uh, some people could say. And I think anybody uh, who sees somebody, sometimes people don't like people that are others, right? Yeah. So I'll be walking down the street and uh, people who don't like my gender representation would call me Pat. And so it's kind oh. of the ease that some people take um, images or, or characters and use that as a form of bigotry or yes. slurs against somebody just they trying were to using Pat them. as a weapon and I, and I, you know and, and fair point on that because I do know and I've heard people use it in that way she's such a pat or they are such a pat and what we know we know underneath that comment what was really there oh sure I mean there's just hate there's hatred and and not not accepted and you know I was called that by a lesbian in a lesbian bar so I'm not trying to say it's just no. <laughs> straight folks it's not just like frat guys it's 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 everybody who like just tries to make other people less than yeah um yeah i get that though now julia you were already i guess reassessing pat when abby reached out take me to that moment of reassessing it well i didn't really reassess it seriously until just before I met Abby, I would say, and mostly after I met Abby. <laughs> um, I mostly had forgotten about it. Like, I just thought it's some old character and everyone's forgotten about it. <laughs> did you really but think everyone had forgotten about Pat? You really thought everyone had forgotten about Pat? I mean, have you been to a Halloween costume store? Every <laughs> Halloween, there's a Pat costume. Um, there's a clip. I was on the Today Show. Someone was Pat on it. You really thought people had forgotten about that character? Maybe I was hoping they'd forgotten about it. <laughs> I've got to pick up where we left off. In the break, you mentioned that you would do Pat, that character, in a different way now. What would you change? I would make Pat more attractive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've sort of come to I did not see that. that coming. Of all the changes, <laughs> I might have lowered the pant because they were a little high. I would have changed the brown to maybe a nice beige. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's some kind of outfit. So how... You, attractive meaning what? Long hair? What, how would you have made no, Pat? Not, I don't no, know. Not I, long hair. In fact, I think short hair is the best. Thank you for saying that. <laughs> Tell me though, how you would change Pat? <laughs> well, I think because Pat was conventionally unattractive and chubby, and I made Pat chubby because it disguised Pat's sexuality. Um, Interesting. It made Pat unattractive, and people conflated the unattractiveness with the androgyny part of it. Like it was like being androgynous was unattractive, which I don't feel. I was just doing it that way. So I would do it again, but I would make Pat androgynous, but not so conventionally unattractive, I guess. Interesting. I'm now trying to reimagine what Pat would look like. I know you've <laughs> continued your comedy work over years, and you had an interesting quote. You said uh, regarding material and what's funny, you can't be so worried about hurting people's feelings and being comedy. 
Um, you know there's this whole conversation about what's appropriate to laugh at anymore or what can you what? laugh at. <laughs> I know, right? Well, you know what? That dovetails. I'll, I'll bring it up. SNL announced that Kim Kardashian is going to host the show. I had no problem with it. Deborah Messing uh, tweeted out that, you know, something about it. It didn't seem that she approved of it. What is the line for who gets to host SNL? What is the line for funny? I don't know. I think... First of all, I think this whole reckoning and, re, you know, this wokeism is actually good. It may be going too far, but I think that it's good. It's it's right. It, I mean, we should be reassessing all these things. There were conventional things that were easy to make fun of that we shouldn't because we weren't thinking about those people being our viewers. Like, I wasn't thinking about actual androgynous people watching yeah. me. I was doing it for a different audience. And now we're aware that the audience umbrella is much bigger, and we should be more sensitive about that. I know I am. 100%. But 100%. It also didn't go too far. So, <laughs> yay and nay on the Kim Kardashian being the host of SNL. I don't know. I just hope she doesn't run for president.